Hello and welcome back to Control. In the last part, we got ejected from Jukebox Land. It was fun. I lost a nickel and we listened to some crappy music as rendered from the 50s, sounding like it was put on a scratchy ass vinyl. And in this part, we are finally going to meet back up with Dylan, Jesse's long lost brother. Yeah, you might want to stay away from that uh, off uh, at the office space style post-it room. Yeah, that one on the right over there that's off screen right now. You don't want to go in there. Mm. And Not because you're scared. You'll be inundated with post-its. Mm, undefined notes. reading. Well, I mean, that is undefined. So yeah, post-it post -it land, you're going to want to give a miss for a little bit. We'll, we'll see post-it land later. Much, much later. Mm, technological restrictions. Ooh. Of course, in a bureau as secretive as the Bureau of Control, they want to control information. The they want to not allow devices that receive or emit any uh, radio signals. Radio waves are the only trans. So I was wrong. And in the oldest house, and even those are often unreliable. So it's probably psionic signals. If the power of collective unconscious is taken into account, it could be that certain pieces of technology are too new in the cult and cultural zeitgeist for the oldest house to allow them. Similarly, these items have not been known to become receptacles for altered status. Technology may be moving at too fast a pace for the oldest house to, uh, for the corruption to occur. Modern technology tends to disappear and break here, sometimes quite violently. Of course it does. Because the oldest house gets angry. The oldest house says, who the hell is John F. Kennedy? Boring. So, uh, anybody know where he is? Is it there? There he is. There he is. Uh, you can't miss him. He's floating guy. So, is he actually possessed by Haster? No, he's corrupted by the Hiss, but as as Emily Pope had described, he's not affected in the same way that the others are. Um... Power of Christ compels you. Say it. You are Dylan Faden's sister. He's talking in the third person. Always a good sign. It is not always a good sign. Sarcasm. Dylan. Trench and Darling made sure of that. I'm P6. P6. See? It says it on my shirt. I see it in the mirror, only when I see it there, it's backwards. Of course not. There is something oddly real about these crazy things that he's saying. If he is still in there, if there is anything left, you have to help me. You came in through the hole in you. We let you in. You've always been here. The only true a copy of 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 a copy Shit. Shit. He can see you. Not only can he see you, he knows you are Polaris. And he sees fruit. My sister, when we were very small, in ordinary, in the desert, through the door opened up by the slide projector. Slide projector. She didn't help when Trench took me away. She didn't give me any powers. All the powers are my own powers. 
she didn't help when they locked me up for years. Hey, come on, we were trying to find you. What Dylan is alluding to is that the Polaris inside of Jesse did nothing about Dylan being locked up for pretty much his entire life after that. That was stupid of them. Oh. They found the hiss. They opened the door up to the hiss. Yep. That's the only thing I can thank them for. Dun dun dun. We stopped the altered world event in ordinary when we shut down the slide projector. And now the projector's here. But because we have superhero protagonist powers, we had the ability to in the first place, in That's order to make possible, so baby, 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 ooh. I welcomed the hiss. I let it in to get rid of her. The hiss set me free. Huh. Interesting that Polaris is female. Too late for my brother. You must see the truth for yourself, Jesse. Sister. The horrible truth about the Bureau. The hiss is the better option. Uh, probably not, honestly. I mean, we're still human under all this shit, so... Salvador wanted me to have it. Wanted? Bullshit. I saw what the hiss did to Salvador. What it turned him into. Okay, Dylan. I'll go. I want to see the truth for myself. I'll go. But only to look for this light projector. Which was locked from us because it was behind a clearance door. We can end this. Well, we can try to end this, Jesse. Well, that was a nice little five minute long little video right there that will you know, get you really seated into the one of the final acts of the game. Now we so know the deal. Is P6 his original designation or is it the tag that the bureau gave him? It's the it's the bureau designation. Uh. Prime prime candidate number six. Okay. The other five candidates were not as successful as he was. Yeah, because they all died uh, they all died and uh, succumbed to his corruption. Or rather, they succumb to uh, altered, um, altered uh, item uh, corruption. One of the two. You know that moment in the story when you're about 20 minutes, 20, 25, 29 minutes from the end of the movie, and it finally dawns on us, you know, what is the hero going? What is the hero here to do? What's at stake? Who's the villain? Who's the bad guy? Where are they? What do they have to do to get it done? Yeah, we're at that stage of the game now. Is that there are very few secrets left in the game? The rest is just exposition that's just going to make you want it even more. So, we just walked into one of the spore rooms that uh, you mentioned earlier. Are you going to go and finish uh, giving the spore samples, or rather getting the uh, the spore antidote from the chick yet? We, we are going to get spore antidote, but that's, that's, that's after the fact. If it wasn't that the game let me continue doing quests, because for narrative reasons... You know, just because you complete... It's kind of like the main quest in Oblivion. Like, you could stop the Oblivion invasion, but it's not going to stop you from... It doesn't end the game like the way Fallout does. Fallout ends the game if you if you finish the story, but not Oblivion. Those are both Bethesda games. Aww. He succumbed to a xenomorph attack. Yeah, we just warped right back to the same starting point that we had begun in, in order to lead up by security, actually by this exact pathway. We're going to the Prime Candidate program in order to find more expository materials. Like audio, ugh, audio grabs. Excuse it kind of looks like you're, files. you're warping back and forth in order to uh, in order to reset these treasure chests to get more crafting materials. 
I may have also taken out a failed attempt at me going into that clearance store room. Yeah, that one right there can go screw itself. They, they that one make needs the damn sure. That one needs the uh, uh, the spores antidote. Because not even having superlative health is going to help you get through that place. Your your health drains too fast. Yeah, you need the spores antidote. We need the hot foot ring. It's the only way to walk on lava. Because otherwise, you will die too quickly and you'll get pissed off. Yeah. Oh, there's a fungus among us. Mm, that's a video game reference. Well, I hope you can agree that starting this part off with an interview with Dylan Faden, that the game is going to extraordinary lengths in order to get under the player's skin. Like Dylan's tendency to look off into the distance instead of making eye contact with the person with whom he's speaking. And then also uh, chanting nonsense to himself while also staring into the ceiling and floating several inches above the ground. Well, he's not actually speaking to Jesse, he's speaking to Polaris, and Polaris doesn't have its own eyes at the moment. He was speaking to Polaris. Which also makes it creepy because we haven't properly, you know, met Polaris yet. Polaris is represented by a little ripple effect around Jesse's head that shows up every now and then whenever Jesse is having an inner dialogue moment. Yeah. It, it, what? What are you? Um, yeah. it. It appears to be just a, a grouping of, of uh, uh, tornado effects. It's just some trash blowing in the wind. Do you have any idea how complicated your circulatory system is? That's a Family Guy joke. And it was a American Beauty parody. You ever? Uh, I have not actually seen see American, American Beauty? Beauty. I know. I know. It's um, it's a somewhat controversial. Uh, be, due to the uh, due to the relationships between specific characters, but that's honestly all I that's honestly all I really know about it. I mean, the only really controversial thing about that movie is that Kevin Spacey's character, you know, fantasizes about fucking a high school chick who is a minor, which met, which would make it statutory rape in some counties. Most counties. Most counties. Yeah. I mean that's it. Otherwise, I mean it's not okay. So it won it won Best Picture. Kevin Spacey got best got the Best Actor Oscar. I mean he did do he he did put on a pretty good performance because of all the all the all of his characters' idiosyncrasies like smoking pot and listening to Bob Dylan while lifting weights and shit. Um, yeah, that was cool. And also his narration over it was, uh, you know, was it it sold it sold the story from beginning to end. Um, could you have a happy and fulfilling life without ever seeing American Beauty? Absolutely, yes. I think that it is 100% a missable movie. Whereas I personally believe that the Kirby Superstar is not a, is not a missable video game. People need to, to experience that. It is just that damn good. Yes. We all need a little Kirby in our lives. A little pink dude who just wants to run around on his rubber shoes and eat. Everything in sight, like like Super Boo from Dragon Ball series. Mm, speaking of Death Battle, had a uh, uh, a uh, match between uh, uh, between Kirby and Boo, and Kirby actually ended up winning that one. <laughs> oh, I love it. So yeah, I think everybody would have given odds to to Kid Boo winning that fight. Uh, only because of the uh, the hor horrendous thing that is power levels. To be perfectly honest, uh, Kid uh, Boo doesn't really have a method of, t of killing Kirby. Kirby is indestructible. Uh, almost it's indestructible. All that, all that Kirby has to do is just eat cake. And donuts. And rice. And chocolates. And watermelon. No, wait, no. The, the cherry, cherries and bananas, those would be Yoshi. So is uh so is it supposed to be Miss Carver on the uh, on the redacted statement as well? Well, we don't know what's on the redacted statement, Mister Greta. You're just guessing at what it says, and you can be one hundred percent wrong in the next part. 
we're going deeper into the prime candidate program in the containment sector. Be safe, everybody.